Well, good morning, everybody. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaco, Washington, and this is the message for Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. Now, I know for the last couple of weeks, we have been in a season of celebration. We've been celebrating the resurrection of Christ, and we've been having a great time here at New Life as far as our worship and uh, the encouraging messages that we've enjoyed. But this week, I have to address some real deal stuff. Uh, we're, we don't have the luxury today of watering down uh, the message from the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't think I ever do that. I hope I never do that. But I want to be really clear that today, uh, I am not going to be watering down the message. And in fact, that, ex that is exactly, exactly what we're going to be talking about. In the movie, Mary Poppins, the, the nanny, Mary Poppins, uh, spoiler alert, uh, is teaching the children to do their chores. And she does so to this cute little ditty. It says, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And while that may be true for doing your chores, or I guess taking medicine, the, it's not, it's absolutely not the best way to address or teach biblical truth. In fact, what happens when you try to sugarcoat or change God's word is that you end up presenting something that isn't the truth at all. And if it's not truth, it's false. And if it's false, it has no value. It, it doesn't have the integrity of God's word, so it doesn't have the strength. It doesn't have the power of God's word when we try to change his message. Now, let me be clear. As we study God's word, there are some parts of it that are going to be interpreted a little bit differently as you look at it from different cultural perspective. It's also true that there are some portions of scripture that were intended for a very specific audience. God was speaking to this group of people. And there are some things that just do not translate well from Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek. When you try to put that into English, it just doesn't come across the same. <clears throat> but we do the best we can with what we have to work with. And we trust church tradition, we trust sound theology, and we trust the leading of the Holy Spirit. In fact, let me be clear, the specific leading of the Holy Spirit is what caused the authors of Scripture to write his words to begin with. And so as we trust the Holy Spirit, as we're reading his word, oftentimes the Holy Spirit will quicken in us what that is supposed to mean and how we can apply that passage of scripture to our lives daily. It's why I encourage you, get into the word of God, read the word of God. As you do, things will become clear as to how you're supposed to live your life here in a way that honors God's word in a way that is full of power and equips you to actually go out and do good things. Now, we're going to be talking more about that in just a minute. But what we can never do and what we should never do is trust our own emotions, how we feel about what the Word of God says, or how some sort of personal interpretation that can be influenced by modern culture or societal norms or how, and this one's a really scary one, how others might perceive us. When we start to do that, when we allow our emotions to influence our interpretation of Scripture, that's dangerous. But that is exactly the same type of heresy that the church had to deal with when, they were, uh, when Gnosticism tried to creep into our faith. And it's the same struggle that the church is facing now. For a minute... Let's just talk about how the world is going to perceive us because I believe that this is a real danger to the church today, especially here in the United States. Many modern preachers and prophets and evangelists and the like, they're trying to modify God's word to appease those in our community who are offended by the truth or who may be offended by the truth. But the problem when we do that, like I mentioned a moment ago, is that we change the message. God's word calls certain behavior sin. And it provides us as believers with expectations of how we are supposed to behave. Those expectations are exactly that. They're expectations. 
It's what God is expecting us to actually go and do. We don't get to change the truth. And if we attempt to do so, it makes the truth into something other than the truth. Listen. The prophets of the Old Testament were not generally well received. Now we look at their words now from a distance and we say, oh wow, these guys were so great. They were so awesome. Look what Elijah did. But you'll remember that Elijah was persecuted and at times fearful. The world has always attempted to silence the truth. When Jesus showed up, he was treated the same way that the prophets of the Old Testaments were. He warned us though, Jesus warned us in John 15, 18, that this would always be the case. He said, if the world hates you, whoa, whoa, let's pause there for just a minute. If the world hates you, oh, pastor, I, I, I don't want to be hated. Listen, I don't want to be hated either. I don't imagine that the prophets of the Old Testament wanted to be hated. I don't think Jesus wanted to be hated. But if the world hates you, Jesus said, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Jesus chose you. The assignment he has given you is a tough one. It's a hard one. But Jesus chose you to come out of the world so the world hates you. Do you remember that I told you, Jesus speaking in verse 20, a slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. They will do all this to you because of me. For they have rejected the one who sent me. They've rejected God. When people in the world reject your message, it's not you they're rejecting. They're rejecting God. Verse 22, they would not be guilty if I had not come and spoken to them, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Jesus told us in his word right and wrong, and the world rejects that. The call and the expectation to be a Christian, in other words, a little Christ, is that we will be rejected by the world. Pastor, you're not really making me feel good this morning. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to give you sugar-coated truth. I'm here to provide you with the truth of God's word so that you can prepare your heart and you can prepare your mind for what it is that is expected of you as a follower of Christ. We are no longer part of this world. And when we're no longer part of this world, we will be treated as outcasts. The world hated Jesus. It should hate us. In fact, let me be clear. If you're delivering God's message and it doesn't make people uncomfortable, you need to ask yourself, am I actually delivering God's message? The world will reject you. This is the natural way of things. When we are serving the kingdom of heaven, the world will reject us because we are not part of the world. But it is important, it is vital, it is necessary that we are faithful with God's message. Look again at verse 22. Jesus says, They would not be guilty if I had come and spoken to them, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Sometimes our message includes conveying the truth from Scripture of right and wrong. People have to know what sin is. But they also, it is vitally important that they know that forgiveness is available as well. And eternal life is available if and only if they put their faith in Jesus Christ. That is the value of God's word. It provides all of the truth necessary. It tells us that we're all sinners. It tells us we have need of a Savior. It tells us who that Savior is and how we can put our faith in Him and be saved. And we get the confirmation of this from 2 Timothy chapter 3. If you go to verse 14, it says, 
but you must remain faithful to these things you've been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. And God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. There you go. It's a complete synopsis. God's word is useful to teach us right from wrong. It corrects us, and it equips us to do every good work. Now, there are some who will hear this, and they will immediately respond with accusations of hatefulness or fear of others. They may even call you names. Homophobe. Look, I get it. I recently taught a message where I said that we should defend the lives of the unborn. And I, and I brought this from a scriptural perspective. But there are some people who view this as a political message and not a, not a spiritual one. But God's word is clear on the subject. But, but people were alienated by that message. And there were some who really hardened their hearts because it didn't line up with how they felt on this particular issue. Listen, we have a responsibility as believers to speak the truth no matter what and no matter how individuals feel about it. And if you think what I'm saying is out of line now, just wait. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. Did you hear that? See, everybody gets caught up on the correction or the rebuke. But do you not hear that encouragement is there as well? Patiently correct and rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. Good teaching provides all those things. For a time is coming, verse 3, when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Hmm, a time is coming? When people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching a time is coming they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear they will reject the truth and chase after myths that sounds really familiar doesn't it Verse 5 says, but you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. All over our nation right now, people are flocking to churches that have abandoned the truth of God's word. People are looking for a place to worship that softens the truth or adds a spoonful of sugar as it relates to specific sins or their own personal feelings about things. They're, they're looking for something that speaks to their itching ears. They want a minister that teaches prosperity or blessing. They don't want one that's going to tell them that there's potential persecution for preaching the truth. They want encouragement or, re or reassurance for their own personal worldview. They don't want to be bothered with discipleship or spiritual growth or, worst of all, change. May you never find that here. Our instruction in Scripture is to preach the Word of God to be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. Now listen, 
we always want to correct in love. But the very nature of truth is necessary, and that necessity is to call sin, sin. We cannot try to reinterpret Scripture to somehow fit our own moral compass. We can't adjust our posture to be like the world. We adjust our posture to be more like Christ. It can never be the other way around. I need to address a particular issue this morning that is currently being driven into our culture with a clear demonic influence. My friend, if you were born a male, you are a male. If you were born a female, you are a female. Scripture says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. It comes from Jeremiah 1.5. And Psalm 18.30 tells us God's way is perfect. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing when he crafted you together, when he knitted you together in your mother's womb. He made you perfect according to his will. It is unnecessary, and honestly, it's sinful to try to pretend that you are anything other than what Jesus made you to be. Truth is truth. God made you a person. He didn't make you a dog or a bug or a tree. Now, we do have emotions. That is something that seems to be even more unique to humans than anything else that he created. Now, I'm not saying animals don't have emotions. I'm saying that we seem to have extreme emotions, and we also experience trauma. And those things can create confusion. They could create pain. But just as you will never be a dog or a bug or a tree, you'll never be a female if you were born a male and vice versa. You can pretend, but it doesn't make it true, no matter how you feel. And because truth is truth, if you want to pretend that you're something that you're not, that's between you and God. Now that behavior might be sinful, but it is completely 100% inappropriate to expect the rest of us to promote your delusion. Just like the child in the story of the emperor with his new clothes. Uh, that guy's naked. You shouldn't be offended when people speak the truth based on who it is that God made you to be. So listen, instead of continuing your charade and expecting those around you to validate your claims, instead seek the purpose of the Holy Spirit. What did he design you for? Because he made you for a reason. Now, if trauma or pain was the catalyst for your decision to live outside of the truth in which God made you, whatever that delusion may be, seek healing from the Lord. Allow ministers and, and counselors to help you rediscover who you are in Christ. Don't allow hurt or confusion to prevent you from walking in the blessing that comes from living the life that Christ created you to accomplish. And instead, obey the Holy Spirit. Seek His blessing. And finally, just because a building has a sign out front that says it's a church doesn't mean that it is. Just because a group of people claim to serve the Lord doesn't mean that they're being faithful with the Word of God. Don't compromise your integrity or your walk with the Lord by getting mixed up with false teaching just because it makes you feel better about yourself or others. There are far, far too many people right now who are rejecting the truth and chasing after myths. You must keep a clear mind. Work. Work at telling others the good news. And fully carry out the ministry that God has given you. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, 
First off, for believers who are watching, Holy Spirit, I ask that you embolden them to always speak the truth. And not just speak the truth, but live the truth. To live out your word so that others can see and know that you are good and that you are faithful, that you forgive us, that you're merciful, and that you have prepared a way that we can have this eternal relationship with you. But Lord, I also ask for anyone who's watching today who, who may be suffering with trying with confusion. They're, they're trying to live a life that it fits within a mold that society or culture has told them is acceptable, but your word tells them is, is false or wrong. Father, I ask healing be allowed to take place. Put those in their life who will be able to speak the truth in a way that's comforting and reassuring so that they can be drawn away from how they feel about things and instead they will be able to look at life here in this world through the lens of your word and be able to live a life according to your will and according to the purposes that you created them for. And they will understand and know that even though we may face challenges and persecution here, that we're just behaving the same way Christ did when he lived on this earth. I ask, Father, that you give us all courage to work and encourage others exactly as it says in your word and not instead, Lord, hide in our own feelings or hide behind things that make us feel good because they're comfortable, but instead live a life of truth. In everything, Lord, let us live a life of truth. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today, and I hope that you'll be back with us next week.